Kelly with ECTV. On today's show, we will learn about water and how it pertains to both public and environmental health. First, we visit World Toilet Day 2023 at Ventura College. And then Allison Lack interviews David Lack of Ventura County Public Works about keeping our watersheds clean. Enjoy the show. The stage is set for World Toilet Day 2023 at Ventura College, an official United Nations Observance Day on November 19th. This event, you know, our first goal was let's help with the awareness, or, you know, raise awareness. Um, so we we're so that we know, you know, we can't help if we don't know. The event took place outside of the Environmental Construction Technology Building, and for every lighthearted game, there was an infographic explaining the reason why World Toilet Day needs to exist. According to the United Nations, about 3.6 billion people actually don't have access to safe toilets. Well, World Toilet is just like celebrating like the day, like what we have in our house. While some attendees came into the event well aware of its significance, others were taking the opportunity to learn. So World Toilet Day um, is a moment to take a look at what it means for water and wastewater in the community and how we can be responsible citizens while using wastewater. You know, I didn't know it was World Toilet Day. I had This was the first I've ever heard of World Toilet Day, to be honest. Still others were there to support the students of Ventura College's water science program. Well, actually, I never really heard about it until my son entered this wonderful program here at Ventura College, the water science program. The students were there to take advantage of networking opportunities, looking ahead to see where their career training would take them. Well, basically, this event is to bring together all of the Ventura water people and students in the program so we can basically mingle um, potential job opportunities and just get to know each other and have a good time. So it's a great way for us to do outreach for a lot of different students. So you guys are going into water science, environmental health is a science core. So along with me teaching, I like to kind of spread the word of uh, environmental health and uh, see if I could wrangle some of you guys up on from water science up into my neck of the woods. Um, so it's a great opportunity for students uh, who are interested in uh, the field of water science. Attending the event were prominent figures in the water science and wastewater treatment fields, all hoping to inspire interest in the essential career pathways. We handle all the wastewater flow that comes as generated within the city limits and we treat it to uh, very uh, high quality standards and then the water's finally discharged into the Santa Clara River estuary. So I oversee the entire wastewater program from beginning to end. Um, obviously we have wastewater, water treatment, production, uh, water distribution and collections and so I oversee all of the operations within the city. Um, so we provide potable drinking water to all the residents uh, within our service area. Um, so yeah, we, we provide clean and safe drinking water for them as well as we offer recycled water to our agriculture. So ultimately, what was World Toilet Day at Ventura College all about? You know, we invited water professionals and students and we hope they get to network and and students can network to start their careers, but also start their careers with this awareness in mind. Yeah. The day brought students and professionals together to take one step closer to a future where sanitation is safe all around the world. Thank you to everyone we interviewed at World Toilet Day 2023. Now, Allison Lack is going to interview David Lack of Ventura County Public Works to understand how our county manages and protects the health of our water and watersheds. Hi, I'm Allison Lack with ECTV. Today, I will be talking with David Lack, Stormwater Resources Manager at Ventura County Public Works Agency, Watershed Protection. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. Great, we're glad to have you here. So, I'd like to start off by asking you, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. Um, as you said, my name is David Lack, Stormwater Resources Manager with Ventura County Public Works Agency Watershed Protection. And my job primary duties are coordinating the efforts of the Ventura Countywide Stormwater Quality Management Program, which is a mouthful, but it consists of all 10 cities within the county, the County of Ventura itself, and the Watershed Protection District, who I work for. 
and I help coordinate efforts to ensure compliance with a stormwater permit. Um, the permit is designed to protect uh, the receiving waters, which are the kind of the big rivers and the oceans you know, around the county, and it regulates the discharges from the storm drain system um, within each city. It's important to understand that when things get into the storm drain system, so you know, run down the street, get in the catch basin, that water is not treated after it enters the storm drain system. It flows directly to the creeks, rivers, lakes, and eventually the ocean. Um, and also, I'll be talking about this, this permit. The official name of the permit is actually the Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System Permit, which again is a mouthful. It's been shortened to MS4, but I'll just be calling it the Stormwater Permit. Um, and also our group of the 10 cities, the county and the Watershed Protection District, we're all known as permittees. So that's um, since we're under this permit. Um, and also want to mention that uh, it's a stormwater permit, but it uh, actually applies to anything that gets into the storm drain. So that it can include um, dumping, you know, uh, you know, illegal dumping, leaky pipes, um, you know, anything like that. So it's not irrigation runoff. So it's not just when it rains. Um, so my job primarily is focused on the countywide efforts um, to comply with this permit. Wow, so that sounds like a lot. Where do you do all this work? Well, my office is in the Ventura County Government Center right here in Ventura on Victoria um, in the Hall of Administration. And that's where all of Public Works Watershed Protection Districts are part of the Public Works Agency. So we have all our, our offices there, along with you know the tax collector, assessor, and others. We also have a uh, operations yard where we prep and store equipment for going out in the field. Um, and that's out in Satakoy. So what does a day in the office look like for you and who are you working with? Um, a typical day in the office uh, includes kind of reviewing and writing compliance reports, um, analyzing water quality data, um, a lot of communications with the permittees, the other cities, since I'm kind of coordinating those efforts. So a lot of uh, emails and um, phone calls with them. Um, we also uh, uh, generate quite a few um, reports, monitoring reports, so uh, generating those reports. Actually, next week we have our big annual report due, which takes all the information of all the activities we've done over the whole year. Um, and so I've been really work, been busy working with the permittees, answering questions, compiling that information, um, and uh, kind, of, kind of getting things ready for that submittal next Friday. So that's always a big big kind of final deadline that we have coming up in the middle of December. Cool. So what are some of the Ventura County Watershed Protection District's responsibilities related to water quality in particular? Yeah, well, within my section, our, our main responsibility is performing the, uh, the water quality monitoring throughout the county for all the permittees and also the reporting um, of that data. Um, we, I also manage a, um, any special studies that we do, um, countywide special studies, uh, manage in the uh, public outreach contract. Um, so I do a lot of um, kind of contract management related work um, and um, kind of coordinating, coordinating all those efforts and, um, you know, on the, on the countywide level. So it's seeming so far like the main purpose of this program is kind of about protecting watersheds and that's part of your job title too, watershed protection. So what is a watershed? Um, yeah, watershed and that is, it's big part of my job is making sure the watersheds are clean. Um, and a watershed is any area of land that drains to a specific water body and um, so it drains or sheds the water to that water body and typically, you know, water gets into the storm drain system, it gets into the creek, flows into uh, larger rivers or creeks and eventually ends up in the bays, um, you know, lakes and in the ocean. Um, and the important thing to remember um, regarding watersheds is basically when it's not raining, pollutants build up on the surface, especially the impervious surfaces or hard surfaces that don't allow water to soak in in the developed areas. So when it does rain, it washes all of those built up pollutants into the storm drain system. And that's what we're trying to ensure 
um, you know, through various methods um, that, you know, that's as clean as possible. So how do you make sure that the water is clean? What's your process for checking it or sampling it? Yeah, well, that's our, our big responsibility um, during, we do stormwater monitoring. So when it's actually raining, we're out there with crews. Um, we also do dry season, so dry weather monitoring, um, and also do something called bioassessment um, monitoring, which kind of looks at the biological health, um, basically measuring bugs and critters and plants within water bodies to see the health of them. The stormwater monitoring um, portion of it is the most complex because you're at the whimsy um, of Mother Nature. So we do a lot of tracking the storms, checking to see their intensity, making sure there's going to be enough runoff um, when it does rain, where it's going to rain. Um, and so we do a lot of tracking and then we actually have 14 permanent sites located around the county um, that are big um, stainless steel enclosures that in, that have equipment inside um, batteries refrigerators pumps um, flow monitoring equipment solar panels all sorts of things and um, so just to walk you through a typical storm event we, we are watching the weather we see there's a storm that we'll be able to sample so we send out crews ahead of time to prep the equipment out in the field and to load big bottles 19 liter glass bottles into the refrigerators and there's pump tubes that go from the water body a channel or the river and get pumped up into the the bottle there um, there's a lot of equipment related to that and we're actually able to remotely program those sites so we get the bottles in there but from our office in the government center there's someone that can go call the site through a modem and able to program so we we see the storm's going to be you know nine hours long and this much rain so we have some uh, we've collected data enough data over the years we're able to um, predict how much water and we and basically the idea is we want to collect samples throughout the storm so those are called composite bottles and so then during the storm we send crews out pairs of two for safety reasons because often some reason it always seems to rain at night in Ventura County so we, we have to be out there and they go make sure the equipment's working correctly and they also take something called grab sam samples um, which are where you actually go down into the creek um, or channel and collect samples separately that um, and th those are for bacteria oils and grease and some um, some other some other organisms that you're sampling for uh, we also take meter readings, um, so dissolved oxygen, conductivity, um, salinity, temperature. Um, and then after the storm, we go and pick up those big, hopefully they're full. Sometimes they're not because there's equipment malfunction, but the full 19 liter bottles. And then all of that gets shipped off to labs to analyze. Um, and we use that data um, to basically see, to tell if we are in compliance with the permit. Um, if there's elevated levels of something, then the permittee who, um, you know, from where it's coming from, uh, uh, does specific actions, you know, in response to hope, hopefully address those issues of the elevated pollutants. And this, all this data also gets reported to the LA Regional Water Quality Control Board, who issues our permit and is kind of known as our regulator. So. That sounds definitely like a lot. Is it relieving to be done with the sampling? Yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, we've, we've had one event, a partial event so far this winter. Um, and it was very, it's a, it's a stressful thing because you're, um, you know, you're at, you have people on call. We have contractors that help us with the sampling, the couriers, the labs themselves. And so it's a ton of communication and coordination to get that. So it's, it always feels good to get those specific amount of numbered events done. Definitely. So you mentioned how you want to be in compliance with this MS4 permit. Can you expand on what the permit is? Yeah, the permit, um, we just got a reissued permit in 2021 and with it's has a main body, but then has a ton of attachments and then appendices and then like attachments to the appendices and it's over 750 pages. So it's a complex document, um, portions of it are, um, but it includes the requirements for the monitoring. Um, it also includes requirements for each of the permittees. Um, so each of the cities implement these things called minimum control measures or MCMs. There's a lot of acronyms in the stormwater world. So 
Um, and those are things like business inspections. So going to industrial sites, making sure that when it rains, stuff that's stored outside doesn't run off into the storm drain system. Biz um, you know, going to kitchens um, and restaurants, um, auto, auto maintenance places, things like that. Um, so they do inspections there. There's a big portion of it actually is public outreach. So that's educating the public. A lot of people don't know, you know, if I dump my oil into the catch basin, in the storm drain, like where it goes, it will be treated. So that's a lot of it. We, we get out into the schools and um, really want to educate um, on, you know, kind of the right and wrong things to, to do related to that. Um, there's also, uh, when there's developments, there's requirements under the permit to make sure that water, say you have a, a field that was, all the water would land when it rained would kind of soak in. Now it's cement. So now that water is running off it. And so now, uh, one of the requirements is building infiltration basins or treatment facilities to treat that water. So it's clean before it goes off or it soaks into the ground. So those are the other requirements. So those are just a couple of the things under the, the permit. Um, it also enforces on something called total maximum daily loads or another acronym TMDLs. And those are specific um, kind of uh, requirements for specific watersheds that are for areas that have been known to have exceedances or problems with water quality. So um, and those have deadlines and actions that are related to, to hopefully bring that water body into compliance. Definitely. And how have we been doing with our compliance? Um, actually, Ventura County has very, very uh, good surface water quality. So um, our beaches are some of the cleanest in the whole state, if not the cleanest. Um, and so when you think about all the stuff that runs off from the land, the hard surfaces, it does you know, eventually end up in the ocean. Um, so we're doing a, a great job. There's still some... Um, you know, kind of looking at bacteria during wet weather is a huge problem everywhere in the whole world. And so we're looking to protect human health um, related to that. Um, there's also, you know, another, you know, issue with the kind of delicate ecosystems is the impact of nutrients. So runoff of fertilizers and things like that into the water bodies. Um, so those are kind of our, some, some main focus areas within the county. Definitely. So how did the MS4 permit come about? Um, it actually came about from the Clean Water Act, which uh, originated way back in the 40s. But then in, I think it was the early 70s, it um, had huge amendments. And that was mostly in response to the um, uh, just kind of public awareness of, I think, a river caught on fire in Ohio in 1969 and Earth Day started happening. So people were becoming more aware of the environment. Um, and so you know, typically when you think of the Clean Water Act, you think of um, you know, some big industrial um, site that's shooting something out into the, the river, um, which was what it was originally kind of designed for. But in the 1980s, it actually became a um, became focused more or it included the storm drain system. So basically regulating what comes out of the storm drain system, um, noti noting that it does contribute pollutants. Um, and so the, the hard thing is it's such a wide area with so many different land uses that when it rains and the rain's uncontrollable, it can have different intensities. Um, so it, it is definitely, definitely a challenge. And, um, um, yeah, that's the, that's the, the history of the permit and how we got to where we are now. And with each new permit, it's, there are more and more requirements. Um, it becomes more and more challenging, more and more complex. So. Definitely. So, and you did mention that our beaches are very clean here and that the permit has a lot of these rules and regulations. Are these rules and regulations as intensive in other states or even in other parts of California as they are here? Um, well, California, as you probably know, is um, known for its strict environmental regulations, and that definitely extends to the, um, you know, to storm drain, um, you know, stormwater permits for sure. Um, every, everything is kind of overseen by the state water resources control board. So they oversee kind of the stormwater management with, throughout the state and they've, and, um, collect, they've actually created, um, about nine regional boards. So they're, uh, they're the one that covers Ventura County is the Los Angeles regional water quality control board. Um, and they issued our permit that covers both, uh, LA County and Ventura County. And, um, and their, you know, their job is to enforce, enforce the permit, um, and the, there is a baseline permit that was created by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency or the EPA. 
and that's kind of the baseline requirements. And some states just use that for their requirements. California, each of the nine regional board areas have their own specific permit that are all definitely have more requirements um, than, than outside the state. Um, and they all actually are pretty intensive, but they vary even within the state there. Um, I'd have to say the LA, um, you know, the LA regional permit is probably one of the more onerous and um, has some of the most requirements, um, you know, out there throughout the whole nation. Definitely. So are we getting enough funding for to comply with all of these? That's an issue that we are struggling with right now. Um, Stormwater does not have dedicated funding source like other utilities, um, you know, trash, sewer water, um, those rates can be raised, um, typically raised, they aren't really lowered, but um, based on need, if they need to build infrastructure, stormwater is kind of off on its own and doesn't have that dedicated funding. Um, so we are definitely struggling as each permit gets more and more um, complex and more requirements. Um, each of the municipalities is, is you know, had, does, you know, doesn't have enough to cover all the requirements. And that's something that we're working on as a countywide group. We're actually just getting started on trying to find ways to, to um, increase the funding for our programs. Definitely. So as we're talking about all of this, I have to go back and ask you, where did you get started? Yeah, thanks for asking. I uh, actually started at UCSB, uh, UC Santa Barbara, and entered UC Santa Barbara, had no idea what I wanted to do as a major. I took an environmental studies class my first quarter of freshman year that was super inspiring. Um, and so I started taking more of those and thought this will be a great, you know, great major. Um, you know, I, I've surfed most of my life. And so just that connection to the environment's really been strong. Um, and then within the environmental studies major, there's, you have to have an emphasis in another subject. And I've always loved maps since I was a little kid, you know, on road trips before GPS, looking at the paper map, you know, in the backseat of the car. Um, and so I got really got into geography and specifically GIS, geographic information systems. Um, and so I double, double majored at UCSB and started actually with, an, well, I still at UCSB um, coordinating or trying to get an internship with the uh, Ventura County Fire Protection District or fire, fire um, agency and doing mapping. Um, and I finally was able to get in a part-time um, internship with them. So we would actually map um, prescribed burns, go up in a helicopter and use GPS to map those, map all the different facilities. So it was really GIS focused. And then um, that was only half time. And then I was, I lucked out that I got introduced to, at the time they're called the Ventura County Flood Control District. Now we're the Watershed Protection District. And I was able to work part-time there mapping um, and doing topography maps and mapping other channels and everything. Um, so then from there, I've gone, uh, worked at both uh, within the county and in private um, consulting. Um, and I have a background in hydrology, which I learned on the job. So that's the study of how much water gets, goes places. And then hydraulics is how the water moves through there. So a lot of my background was on mapping, you know, the storm drain system and how much water uh, gets, gets in there if they have to build new pipes or there's new development, how does it impact the downstream channels? Um, so master plans of drainage and that sort of thing. Um, and that does tie in nicely to the water quality. And um, so I've only been really f focused on the water quality side of things for probably the past, I guess now it's about uh, seven to eight years. So, yeah. Interesting. And how would you recommend someone looking to pursue protecting our watershed start out? Um, education wise, I mean, I work with um, chemists, biologists, engineers, resource managers, um, social scientists. Um, so it's really a multidisciplinary um, field. Um, so education wise, anything, you know, like anything related to, you know, to water, the water sciences, I would, you know, recommend pursuing. Uh, if you're looking job wise, you know, all the municipalities, like I said, we have these requirements. So they're only getting more and more complex and there are more and more requirements. So, um, you know, checking, you know, uh, the websites for the job postings, you know, with the different cities or the county. Um, there's, like I said, I've been saying this a lot, if there's these, um, issues are complex. So there's consulting firms that specialize in stormwater and stormwater compliance that, that we rely on. And that's something that, um, you know, that another avenue to look at, you know, and often, like I said, I started with an internship and that really helps you to learn what you like, what you don't like, um, you know, what sorts of things do you want to, um, 
pursue um, and also gets your foot in the door. It helped me get a full-time job with the county by starting out just kind of working part-time. So. Awesome. And what should a citizen of Ventura County, why should they care about all of this? Because a lot of it, you're using lots of acronyms, as you said, and like, yeah. why does this matter? Well, um, one of the main reasons is human health. We're trying to protect the human health. So you don't want to go to the beach and get sick um, if there's runoff that contains typically it'd be bacteria um, also recreational activities boating and all that um, so the human health is a big thing economic reasons um, you know within ventura county we rely a lot on tourism people coming to the beach people you know recreating in the county agriculture is huge you need clean water for agriculture um, also really just thinking about um, uh, just the aesthetics you don't want to go down you know, to your local river or creek and see a bunch of trash and, and graffiti and dead fish and things like that. Um, uh, there's legal requirements. So it's something to think about if, if there's, if you're out of compliance and there's different things where you're not in compliance with a permit, there's always the potential of getting fined, you know, the, the entity or the municipality getting fined. Um, and then also just preserving for future generations. We want clean, clear, safe water for, you know, to continue for our future generations within the county. Definitely. So what are some things that citizens can do? Um, very simple things. Pick up after your dog um, or cat and, uh, um, and dispose of that in the proper bin. Um, you know, recycle. Um, there's things, you know, washing your car. Take it to the car wash. Don't wash it in the street. Because as I mentioned, it's not just stormwater, it's when you're hosing things off, all the, you know, the, the soap and other things can pick, get picked up and transported within the curb and gutter, which is part of the storm drain system. A lot of people don't know that the streets actually convey water to the catch basins. Um, there's, you know, you can participate in a beach cleanup. Um, uh, when you go out and get, get food for takeout, just, you know, don't get the extra, um, you know, single use plastics. Um, the big thing we want to, you know, tell people is you don't have to be environmentally perfect, but just doing these little things really, really does make a big impact and, and helps um, do your part. Um, another important thing is if you have a leaky vehicle in your driveway or on the street, leaking fluids, oils, grease, gas, whatever, um, you want to make sure you get that fixed. Um, along with, say you have a leaky vehicle in the street, it's leaking these things, then your, your, um, uh, your sprinklers are shooting on the sidewalk so they're they're watering the sidewalk that water obviously does not soak in gets into the curb and gutter takes those pollutants and carries them on their way so different things like that check your irrigation around the house so simple things but things that really do make a difference definitely and as we wrap up today is there anything else you'd like to add um no i just really appreciate these great questions it's kind of fun uh and i just getting the word out there a lot of people don't know about the storm drain system or that there's requirements on limiting the pollutants that leave you know leave the cities the city hard areas and the storm drain systems and get into the receiving waters um, we do have a couple of websites i'd like to mention um, there's cleanwatershed.org um, that's kind of our public facing website and that has all sorts of information um, you know one of the things uh, people do one of the programs that we have is the illicit discharge and detection elimination system so that's basically people can report if they see dumping or something going on around the creek so we have all that that information on there on that website also at vcstormwater.org is more of the uh, technical website that has all of our annual reports with our water quality data um, other plans and programs that we're working on and, and different things like that um, but yeah, just, just really getting the word out there that, you know, reminding people that when it rains or when you're hosing things off, that water goes directly into our, our local creeks and moves on down the, on the, on the way to the ocean. And, um, so doing every little bit, you can help to kind of conserve that water, keep it on site and, um, and, uh, and those little bits really, really help. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Definitely. Yeah, it was great talking, and I hope our listeners can definitely learn and continue to protect our watersheds. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you again. Definitely. I'm Allison Lack with ECTV. Thanks for watching. 
Thank you, David, for your insight and for conveying to us all the importance of environmental awareness when it comes to the essential resource of water. We hope you enjoyed the show and learned about the difference sanitation and clean water makes in all of our lives. This has been ECTV. Thanks for watching.